The problem is that iconoclasm is incredibly seductive to a particular kind of person. A main reason why the woke agenda becomes ever more unforgiving and extreme is that like hard drugs and pornography, it's addictive. You have to push further to chase that puritanical high. You have to bully that little bit harder to hashtag be nice. And when it comes to rectifying what you know to be the evil of the past, wow, there's a thrill. You get to play God. Here's a rule of thumb for you. The more energetic the activists, the more narcissistic they tend to be. Because it's all about them, their angst, their guilt, their feelings. It's not about any meaningful engagement with British history. If they were really appalled by slavery, then they'd be moved to do something about modern day slavery in places like Africa, the Middle East and China. Instead, they seem to have concentrated all their energies on a statue in Bristol. If they really hate racism, then they should load the oldest of all prejudices, anti-Semitism. But many of them, to put it mildly, have a bit of a blind spot with that one. The Royal Court Theatre is the most gleeful of decolonizers, yet it seems to think that Jews don't matter. Maybe it should stage some lessons in 20th century history for itself. I could go on, but you get the idea. So what do we do about it? Well, it's important to debate. You might open someone's eyes and you might learn something yourself. But choose who you engage with. If you're arguing the toss online with an anarchist about British history or politics, then you're wasting your time. You might as well talk to the cat. You'll get more sense. Really, truth starts with you. Personally, I mean, not online. Try to embody, in a very modest way, the historical values that you think are important and that seem to be under threat. But here's the thing, and this will separate you from the keyboard warriors. Don't tell anyone about it, just do it. What else? Well, read. Listen to podcasts if you don't like reading. Use social media wisely. Follow interesting people. In other words, learn about that past you're frightened of losing, about your relationship with it, about your country. Finally, get involved in education, in culture, in politics. If you don't like them playing fast and loose with our history, then do something about it. Sitting on the sidelines complaining about political correctness gone mad won't achieve anything. The personal stuff is a quick fix. The public engagement is a longer game. There are gatekeepers galore. It'll take time. But we need to start a new march through the institutions. We need to create new institutions. And don't forget Burke's little platoons, family, local community, church, and so on. They're the most important links we have to our past. Let's treasure them.